today's episode of the unwritten rule we've got a good show for you guys just another two-man crew kenny's not around so it's just the peyton and jack show uh here for your monday also i tried to move locations a little bit so at least i'm on a couch and a little bit less uh stuck in a bunkery so hopefully there's that for all the youtube viewers out there but a good show nonetheless with peyton and i uh here to get your week started got a bunch of basketball to talk about gonna do a little uh roster talk because we got some uh tamar bates not tamar bates uh john tanjay and caleb grill uh news about them probably coming back for another season because of the injury stuff uh and the injury richards and things like that so we got that little quick hit stuff we're going to talk uh freshmen as well because peyton marshall and anor botang were in some showcase events so uh there's there's some highlights to recap and some stuff to dive into there uh, then we have quick hits. We do have Ken Sports Shorts. Kenny did send a uh, sporacle that we're going to do. It's about the Masters. So we'll talk We'll talk some Masters. We're recording on Sunday night. The Masters is already uh, done, so we can do a little, little, little recap for you guys. Uh, and then we have Dirty Birds, and then our fraud rankings, and then the ratio of the week. So great show, uh, as per usual, for everybody. And it is all presented by Bet Online. Bet Online remains your number one source for all your summer sports uh, this season, from MLB to golf. Just had the Masters. Plenty of bet online mats, bets there. Uh, we got the NBA and NHL playoffs. The NBA playoffs got set. We're going to talk about that in just a second. Uh, but all the latest stats, news, and scores are all available to follow your favorite teams. Get the latest odds and lines, including the latest team matchups, player props, and odds on just about every sport out there. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to get in on the action. Bet online where the game starts. And Peyton, uh, we have, I mentioned the NBA. Uh, we got our best beats of the week, of course. Records. Uh, I'm 35 and 22. Kenny's 30 and 27. Peyton, you are 32 and 26. You're hot on my tail for that. And um, I mentioned the NBA playoffs. It is. It, we got the we got the final standings today. Today was the last day of the regular season, um, and so I think we all picked play-in games. We did. Uh, so I'm starting. I've got the Miami Heat in their play-in game. This is a fun one. I got them plus five against the Philadelphia 76ers. Uh, maybe not a play-in game that people were expecting because, you know, you got Philly with Joel Embiid, but he got hurt, so they kind of fell down, and now we're in the play-in against Miami for the right to get the uh, the seven in the East. I think it's pretty stupid. I've learned as a Milwaukee Bucks fan to never bet against uh, Jimmy Butler in the playoffs, so I am going with the Heat plus five. Absolutely. And the winner of this game gets uh, bing bong the Knicks. So uh, I probably if I was the Knicks, I would be kind of dreading. I mean, that one of these two would be the seven, but it is what it is. Um, I went ahead and went against my team. I'm picking the Hawks plus three point five against the Bulls. Maybe the Bulls win. I don't really care if they do or not. It's the play in. Uh, so I'm going to take the Hawks here. Uh, hopefully they put me out of my misery. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, the Bulls, dude, the Bulls came, you know, very close to beating the Heat last year, and then the Heat took this all the way to the final. Like, the play-in game, or, or the play-in games got fully, like, accepted because of what the Heat ended up doing afterward. So, hey, maybe that'll be, maybe that'll be the Bulls, Peyton. Definitely won't be. Yeah, but you didn't maybe. lose Billy Donovan. You kept Billy Donovan around. He's not going Fantastic. to Kentucky. <laughs> I'm really invested in the Bulls after all, so. Yeah. Um, Kenny picked the Lakers plus one against the Pelicans. That's also kind of a fun now, one. I like both those teams. Now a pick em, mind you. So. Oh, okay. Kinda, now a pick em. Kind of got to suck one. if you're the... Yeah, he got him at plus one. Kind of got to suck one. if you're the Pelicans, though. Because, I mean, you, you, uh, you lose this game to LeBron. You got to then go face the Warriors. I mean... Yes, yeah. those two teams are not fantastic, but I mean, you would never ever willingly pick to play those two teams in the postseason if you had the option. I don't think the West is just like absurd. I mean, like I, I think I have more on it later, but we had, the, I mean, the Thunder won the West somehow, and they're the youngest team in the NBA. And yeah, like the play-in is New Orleans, LA, Sacramento, and Golden State. Just like four very good teams. Golden State went to the finals two seasons ago. Like, I, I don't know. The the discrepancy between the West and the East is is quite stark. But we'll see. We'll see if Kenny's beat hits. I I don't I don't blame him for not wanting to bet against LeBron. So um he'll take that. So there you go. Best beats of the week. Uh presented by Bet Online. Thank you to Bet Online for those odds. 
Um, we'll see how we do. Definitely a lot of NBA playoff bets to come. Uh, Peyton, quick early finals pick now that you have the – who's going to win the NBA finals? Uh, I'm going to take the Nuggets again over the Celtics. Okay. And the West for me feels like a crapshoot. I mean, Jokic is going to win MVP again. He's averaged like 30 and 13 or whatever the hell it is. Um, you'd be, I'd be hard pressed not to bet against the Celtics, but you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to go a little bit more of a dark horse. Give me the Celtics in the East, the Los Angeles Clippers taking down the Celtics. I'm going the Clippers. Not West super team. Clip Kawhi City. Another chip. Is it finally yeah. their time? I don't think it's, so. If it feels like it every season, also it would bring a ring to Kobe Brown. So he, we got to do it. True. We got to do it. Um, all right. There you go. Well, plenty of NBA finals talk as the, uh, as the spring rolls on. But let's dive into the show, Peyton. We got some zoo stuff to talk about. And the unwritten rule starts right now. I just, I, Marcel, where are you going with that disc? You were not putting that on again. Marcel, okay, if you press that button, you are in very, very big trouble. Attention. Everybody stop what you're doing. It's time for The Unwritten Rule, a Mizzou sports podcast brought to you by the Believe Network, alongside Peyton Haverman and Kenny Van Doren. Here is your host, Jack Knowlton. Welcome back to the Unwritten Rule. Today is Monday, April 15th, and Mizzou men's basketball is probably going to keep a couple of guys from a season ago. Uh, Peyton, I, this is this is an interesting you know, talking point, I think, for, for us two in particular, because I think we differ a little bit on this. So the, the news, if you haven't seen, is that Caleb Grill and John Tanjay uh, are – probably coming back the two of them uh they had the medical red shirt kind of situation they both played about eight or nine games last season both older players um grill has been at was at iowa state i believe for three seasons and unlv for one john tanjay uh of course at colorado state um but yeah dennis gates and company probably gonna bring uh the two of them back looking like they're gonna red shirt it's an interesting one um, it obviously, you know, should those two come back and get that extra year, which they wouldn't otherwise have, if it wasn't for the medical red shirt, uh, they'd be, you know, out of eligibility. So Peyton, I, I'll get your thoughts on this first. Cause I think I'm a, I'm a little more positive about it than, than perhaps you are, but Caleb grill, John Tanjay, uh, probably coming back next year. Yeah, I guess it's not totally unexpected. Uh, especially when they kept grill out, it seemed like they'd want to keep them. I mean, I was always fine with keeping one for sure, particularly Grill, because, I mean, we've seen he has been a contributor, a very high-level contributor at the high major level. Um, he was starting to get into a little bit of a groove before he got hurt. Um, but I don't know. It's just it's really interesting that on an 0-19 team, you'd be willing to bring two guys that really do weren't large contributors, I guess, to that losing effort. Maybe you really do believe in them, but I am surprised Dennis Gates isn't just kind of going more in on the portal. Uh, we'll see what happens. I mean, that doesn't mean they're going to not get anyone from the portal. And obviously, I mean, he doesn't explicitly say both of them will be back next year. He's just saying they're getting the red shirt. So I guess the idea still exists that maybe they could transfer after that. But I mean, that doesn't seem likely. I don't think... Dennis Gates would have said anything about it uh, if that were maybe on the table. Um, so we'll see what happens. I'm a little surprised. We'll see where Mizzou uh, sits in the portal uh, down the road. They're still in on guys like Tony Perkins. There is a little bit of buzz behind Mark Mitchell. Uh, so we'll see what happens in that instance. But I am a little surprised that both of these guys seem like they're locks to come back. I just think, like, I don't know. It, it's it's an interesting one because, yeah, like, I think on the one hand, I'm kind of curious because, you know, it's basically like a new transfer. And that's how, like, I kind of want to choose to look at it, at least for myself. And so I look back, like, so John Tanjay in his last season at Colorado State, 14.6 points per game, 4.7 rebounds per game, shot 38.9% from three on around five attempts per game. 
I'm looking at that and like if that's a new transfer I'm bringing into an 0 18 team from a season ago, I'm I'm pretty excited about that. Now him and what kind of has put me off a little bit is I relooked at Peyton and I, you know, we're we're handy dandy Torvik people. Uh and you know, I I took a look at that. Both Grill and Tanjay in their last seasons at their other schools were kind of meh in that category. Um, both good shooters, both kind of just, you know, not great at things like rebounding and assist to turnover ratio, which is something uh, Peyton and Dave Gates are, are fans of uh, for that matter. But I don't know. I think it's interesting. The stats for Grill, too, if you were curious, nine and a half points per game and around four rebounds. Uh, the other thing that's, I think, interesting about Caleb Grill is, in his five seasons now, technically, of, of college basketball, he's never played more than 30 games. Um, that's a fairly high bar, but, you know, hasn't really stayed healthy. And John Tajay, I was curious, like, left Colorado State. Colorado State got a whole uh, – a lot better uh, this last season. Went to the NCAA tournament, you know, with, with him gone. Obviously, you know, it's not just solely down to him, but – I think I look at it as like it's two. You're essentially getting two new guys. They have a lot of veteran experience, um, and they're going to bring something. You know, if nothing else, a little bit of maybe consistency. You expect them to translate better to the SEC theoretically, just because they they've played for a lot longer. They have a little bit more experience. And shoot, Caleb Grill, if he gets ejected from games, Missouri wins. They're one and zero in that department. So, I think I think that's a positive. Uh, I don't know, Peyton. Any other thoughts just on on these two? I'm. You know, both good three point shooters. I, I don't I don't think I hate it. I think I'm just choosing to to see the the positive side of of this happening. Yeah, I mean, Dennis, he's got to be right about these two. Then if you're uh, I mean, look, I'm not really concerned about scholarship and roster math. The numbers will always work out. They're going to have the right amount of scholarship guys and they're going to have a X amount of players suit up every night. I'm not worried about that, but. These are two guys that you're going to need to contribute if you're willing to go down this road with them. So uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, I, I think I think it'll be interesting um, for these for these two down the road. Uh, and, you know, hopefully, especially Tanjay, who was a guy that Dennis brought in, you know, what less than a week around a week after Missouri's season ended last year in the tournament. So clearly somebody that that Dennis was, was really excited about. So, um, yeah, I think, I think we just see, uh, so Caleb grill, John Tanjay probably going to come back and maybe eliminates how many players Mizzou goes after, uh, in the transfer portal. But like Peyton said, there's still some buzz around some guys still waiting on Perkins. Mark Mitchell's an interesting one, the guy from Duke. Uh, but yeah, Caleb grill, John Tanjay probably going to be back here next season. Um, Let's touch on some uh, some or a quick hit on the on the I guess team just gone by uh, from the season ago. The team we all miss so dearly, Sean East Payton. We brought him up. Uh, he was at the Final Four, and now he's going to the uh, the Portsmouth Invitational, which is a nice draft uh, little prep thing. Missouri fans might be familiar with the Portsmouth Invitational yep. because that is the thing that uh, Connor Vanover did last year. That then he decided to come back to school and then had to get suspended for four games. So. Sean East does not have any eligibility left to do that. Thankfully for him, uh, I guess from a suspension wise. But hey, Sean East Payton, uh, pro, you know, a little pro combine event. I think I think he's a solid G League player. That's that's my projection for him. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't tell you. I'm not a scout at all. Uh, I don't know what really makes a good NBA player as opposed to just a good college player. Um, but I mean, it's cool to see Sean East get in a tournament like this i could not tell you one thing about the portsmouth invitational other than the fact that it cost mizzou three games of connor van over um <laughs> but yeah i mean he's going going to get another chance to showcase i mean i'm always just struck by the 45 percent from three from him this past year i mean if you had told mizzou fans that you were going to get th this out of shawnee's coming into the year you'd probably assume they'd be in the top half of the sec at worst but is what it is yeah yeah the, i mean the improvement there was was wild i mean there weren't very many storylines for uh you know like sec network and for people doing mizzou games this year broadcasting so that became one that was on repeat was how much he improved from three the papa shot stuff as well 
Um, I, I know a bit more with NBA scouting and stuff like that. It, he's, I, I, you know, the, the defense isn't quite there, uh, enough to really, to really move you, especially for a smaller guard, but he's a good playmaker. Uh, he can score. He, he, you know, sort of does, um, you know, does it all there on the offensive end. He's a smart player. Um, certainly can force a few turnovers. So I, I think he'll, you know, he'll get a nod in the G league. Worst case, he should definitely end up somewhere overseas. He is good enough to play. Uh, professional basketball. I think he's he's um, earned that over the course of his long career. So best of luck for Sean. And yeah, don't come back to college after you do this because you will get suspended for three games. Everyone learned from Connor Vanover. Um, right. Other things on the basketball front, Peyton. Uh, I, we have this note on Truman, but we'll do that last. Um, Peyton Marshall uh, and Anor Botang. I'm gonna seg- I'll segue to that first. Um, they were they were in some some skill showcases, Peyton. There was. Uh, there was some clips from Peyton Marshall that that went kind of viral. He seems like he's a trash talker. I think Mizzou's getting kind of a fun, uh, fun little addition there in terms of a guy who's confident in himself. I was listening to an interview of him as well. Um, but these guys competed in a couple like uh, bigger high school showcase things. Uh, I don't know what you saw highlights wise from these two, but uh, what you what you make of it? Got a chance to kind of see Peyton Marshall and Arbotang, two people very much expected to turn this Mizzou program around pretty quickly here as freshmen. Uh, in the next season, what do you see from uh from these two guys here, kind of in some some showcase games? Well, I mean, I saw one highlight clip from each. Uh, Peyton Marshall did get a lot of buzz at this Capitol Hoops uh, All Star game, I believe, is what it was. Um, he drained this three like he didn't even look. He shot it and walked away because he knew it was going in. Uh, two for three from from deep. Uh, six six of nine overall. 14 points, five boards, two assists. Pretty positive stuff when you're going uh, in these showcases. Um, for Anor Botang, I don't have the clip here, but I do know that he had he he did he had kind of pedestrian numbers. Four points on two of five shooting with a rebound, two assists, two two steals. Uh, so nothing like eye popping, but he did have an and one, I believe. Um, he might have missed the free throw but he got an and one against Cooper flag. So uh, Uh only the number one recruit in the nation there. He went coast to coast on him, beat him. So uh, there you go. I mean, these two guys, this was at the Nike hoop summit, as you can see here. Uh, Very cool for both of these guys. Um, Yeah. And Botang was wearing these Ghana inspired uh, shoes. They looked very nice. So very cool for both of these guys. And uh, I mean, neither one, seem to like get embarrassed i did see a lot of buzz like what you mentioned though peyton marshall's a bit of a trash talker uh he did kind of have that pesky reputation from what people were tweeting okay full disclosure uh my wi-fi doesn't work the best so if there's some jump cuts we might have to cut out some dud footage (laughs) uh so that's why the that's why the jump cuts being made Peyton, i don't know i don't know anything else to be besides up front you know what i mean right that's just that's just that's just letting it. We're letting that transition be what it is. Uh, Anor Botang yeah. and Paid Marshall are great. They're going to be. Great yeah, that was the end. Di- f- full disclosure. All we were saying was Anor Botang and uh, Peyton Marshall look good. Hopefully they're yeah. big parts of the future here. Precisely. Um, segwaying. Anyway, uh, our final note on the Mizzou front. A little bit of a fun one. Truman the Tiger. He uh he took up an award. He's like the mascot of the year. What do they have officially? The 2024 NCA and NDA. I don't know what those stand for. Uh, he was named the best mascot. I guess I didn't even. I guess I knew that was a thing. I didn't know how official it was. But congrats to Truman. Look at that. Uh, I like Truman. I um. If, yeah. If I had to guess, I would say it's National Cheer Association and National Dance Association. Because if you can see the trophy here, says cheer and dance. That would make sense. That would make sense. Good, good context clue usage there, Peyton. Um, I don't know. I, li- I like Truman. I uh, one time I had a rock paper scissors best of five with Truman the Tiger in the stands at a women's basketball game. I did win. So nice. Um, Clearly, they didn't make him play rock paper scissors to win this award. I like Truman. Every time I'd see him in the stands, I'd ask him to do the helicopter with his tail, and he'd do it. So. Uh, cool truman whoever it was in behind the mask neat design i like that he's goofy i think mascots should be goofy i don't think mascots logos and everything they can be whatever 
But mascots, I think, should be cool, go- like funny, goofy looking. Like I like mascots like Truman. So also he's yeah. uh, got famous images of him on a couch. <laughs> yeah, go look up what we're talking about. He's smoking a Don't, certain product that is legal now in Missouri. So, you know, right. But I if think you're that, under the I age think 18, when, don't. Well, yeah, yeah. You know, be responsible. But I think, I think when the when weed got legal in Missouri, that like went back, circled all around. Be like Truman, Truman right. was ahead of the game. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah that, is, that is an iconic. Yeah, Truman has been on the come up though. Yeah, he's been on the come up. Uh, congrats to him. I agree with your goofy take. I think it's either like goofy or like if you have a live mascot. Those are my two. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, but that's I the, like Goofy. That's that's the criterion. So shout out to Truman, best mascot in the world. He uh, he won best mascot of the year. All right, Peyton, let's segue. We're going to finish up with uh, with quick hits. Um, next show, by the way, from a zoo, we're going to talk. Uh, we're going to talk softball and gymnastics a little bit. We got a guest coming on. So stay tuned for that. That'll be a that'll be a good show. We're excited to bring that for you guys. Uh, but for now, let's segue and finish the show with quick hits. <laughs> Okay, quick hits time. Uh, we do not have Kenny here for Ken Sports Shorts, but he did submit a Ken Sports Shorts. We do have a quiz, Sporkle quiz, uh, to dive into. So it'll be Peyton and Jack Sports Shorts. Peyton, I'll kick it to you. What do we got? What are we? What are we quizzing? We got a. We got a. We got a good, uh, timely, good current events one. Yeah, Scotty Scheffler just won his second Masters today. He'll be on this list because. It is the last 10 Masters winners, uh, Nolton, the last 10 people to win a green jacket. Uh, I think we're going to get this one done. I can think of like seven for sure right off the top of my head in the last 10. So, okay. uh, Whenever you're ready. Start it. I, you like, I'll throw a couple names out there and then you just fire them away after that. If you've like, you know, okay, I'm going to start it. Have other ones in the tank. All right, start it. Oh, what? This one stinks. Are you kidding me? Oh, okay, do you have well, to like what? Hideki wanted... Or wait, how do you... Uh, oh, we're okay. matching them. Oh, my God. Okay. okay Tiger won in 2019, so we have to submit the guesses. Okay. Uh, who handed... Oh, right. That's right. Reed handed uh, Tiger his green jacket. Dustin Johnson was 2020, yep. the one in November. Rom was 2022. Which means, oh shoot, where is Scotty in here? Oh, Scotty would be twenty-one. Sergio right. Garcia is like twenty nineteen. That one was like pretty he's, recent. He's eighteen. He's eighteen. He's the year before. I don't like 18. that. This is making me okay. Get Spieth down there. He's not up here. Um. Okay, so Reed is eighteen. That is correct. Woods is 19. That's correct. Okay, we got all this right. This up here, read read up is is right. Now we just got to get the order of this right. Okay, wait. Uh, Garcia. Is Bubba, oh. Bubba, Bubba, was before Garcia? Bubba, Bubba was before Garcia. I think Bubba's 14, to be honest. Because Spieth was about to yeah, go back to I back. I think and Spieth was like that. Yeah, Will it I is definitely recent. Will it is definitely bef- after speed. I think it this the only thing I'm concerned about. I can't remember if Sergio was the one that put Woods' green jacket on. That would have been a lot more publicized. So I think it was Reed. So I think we have the right order here. The only thing right. is these bottom three, right. like Bubba. I totally don't. Bubba could be here or like up here, but I think he's down here. No, so. I think probably. I think yeah. I think we're close. Hit it. I'm gonna go ahead and submit this. Right, what? Right. Oh, we got. Okay, we can keep going. So Scotty was 2022 20, then, and Hideki is 21. Okay, we got it right. I did, we had Hideki and Scotty. Oh yeah, I didn't. So you had that wrong. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that was just inattention because I was so focused on the bottom five. But we got 10 out of 10. Yeah, Pretty, it'll say 90. It. I think yeah. we got it right. So. Yeah, we can. Pretty good. The average is only sixty-eight. We did good, dude. The ma- uh, the Masters mm-hmm. though, like, how about it? 
Scotty is going to be at the top of golf for a long time. If if you didn't, no kidding. Yeah, the best the best golfer in the world won. That's it was that plain and simple. So. Yeah, yeah, he's gonna dominate for a while. I liked. I was sad. I'm I'm a big Max Homa guy. Uh, Kenny, I know is as well. So we were we were happy that he got close, but uh, one day no cigar. I no one was stopping Scotty Scheffler. I mean, he's yeah, ridiculous. No. Scotty's incredible. Um, so hope everyone enjoyed the match. They're watching it. Dirty Birds of the week. Um, Peyton, I will let or of the weekend. Excuse me, I will let you do Kenny's Dirty Bird. Yeah, Kenny's Dirty Bird of the weekend is the Cardinals organization as a whole. I think specifically the St. Louis Cardinals. Because they have less wins than their double A affiliate in Springfield, the Springfield Cardinals. Um, the Springfield Cardinals right now are nine and zero, perfect nine and zero in in the Texas League North. They beat the Wind Surge eight to seven today. Uh, as you can see, yeah, I don't know m- many of these players. I'm not going to lie to you, uh, <laughs> but as you can see. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I know like one or two of these names. Um, but Kenny's the minor league guy, really. Uh, he is really. I mean, he's ha- he's building his career around it. So, uh, Kenny wanted to get some MILB action in here. There you go. Um, nice, good dirty bird, Kenny Payton. What's My dirty bird of the week is going to be Kobe Brown. Now let's break down the connection here. And the only reason I'm picking Kobe Brown is because. He's my favorite college player ever, and uh, he had another nice slam uh, just today for the Clippers in the final game of the regular season. Kobe Brown is going to the postseason once again. Um, Here's my Dirty Bird connection. Kobe Brown is from Alabama. Jack Knowlton currently living in Alabama. Jack Knowlton's middle school uh, team name, the Orioles. There you go. There's also Hooters is trending over there. They're the Owls. Uh, oh, they're gone right as I started uh, circling that. So there you go. There's my bird connection. Kobe Brown still making plays in the NBA. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm like cheering for the Clippers in the playoffs partially because of uh, him. Yes, Huntsville, Alabama native. Kind of far from where I am now, but he is from there. This is true. Um, there was actually, you know what I heard? Uh, so I, like I've said this on the show before now, I, I cover Alabama now. That's my side hustle to this. Um, (laughs) uh, but someone told me that a lot of Alabama fans wanted Kobe Brown to transfer there before, uh, Dennis came in. They thought they might get him, uh, to return to his home state, play for, uh, play for the tide. What a spin zone that would have been. Uh, Well, that's really Alabama team. Yeah. That's That's really what didn't work out for them. All right, Knowlton. What's your dirty bird? Yes, my dirty bird of the week. Uh, it's going to Kentucky. Now, hear me out. Dirty bird. Their rival is a bird, Louisville. Cardinals, so bird. Um, we talked about Kentucky last show, but I don't think we've been on since they decided to hire Mark Pope from BYU. Um, and I, I don't know. I think the national call, or the, I don't know, the national, Kentucky's own fans were kind of dunking on the Wildcats for hiring Mark Pope, who has Never won an NCAA tournament game, and now he's coaching one of the winningest programs of all time. He's a Kentucky alum, and I will give Kentucky fans credit today at his like press intro. Uh, they like packed the stadium. They brought the '96 team back. Mark Pope was on that team uh, that won a national title. Um, but still, I think it was just kind of fun watching the internet dunk on Kentucky for not getting Dan Early, not getting Nate Oates, not getting Scott True, uh, not getting I don't know who else. Uh, Dan Wright, Hurley, Billy Donovan, Dan Hurley. Um, yeah. Instead, they're stuck with Mark Pope. But you know what? We'll see what Mark Pope does. I don't really care. I'm not a Kentucky fan, so I don't mind seeing the downfall of Kentucky. This was quite funny to me. So they're my dirt birds for that reason. Just very surprised. It was a search yeah. that wrapped up real quick. Like they were convinced after not getting Scott Drew, like they had enough conviction to really move to Pope quickly. I know. Like you mentioned, he was a fa- he's a very famous alum of that program. But you look at his resume; it just doesn't scream Kentucky head coach to me. Maybe he'll make it work with uh, more resources. In fact, I'm sure anybody could really that that has half a brain could make it work uh, with the resources uh, Kentucky has for basketball. But 
yeah, just a pretty surprising hire. Like you always like Kentucky is a job where you like get names. Like you just hire names that are like I think you and I have talked about it. The term rock star is the term we really use mm-hmm. most of the time for that. So just kind of surprising. Um, but oh, overall, it is what it is. They got them. So I'm the I guess the thing I'm the most grateful for is again selfishly being on the Alabama beat. If they would have hired Nate Oates, I would have been very annoyed simply because I did not want to cover. I texted Peyton this. I just did not want to cover another coaching search. That was not I went through Saban. Didn't didn't want to have to do that again. That was I was happy they that I avoided that from a work standpoint because I'm lazy and I don't like to do a lot of work. So there you go. Uh next segment. Uh oh, Nolan. Oh, wait for what it. time wait. is it? What time, time is it, Nolan? Time is it, Nolan? It's broad segment. Five. Five. Who's number five? At number five on the fraud rankings. We have Mr. Trevin Brazil. Uh oh, he's declared for the NBA draft. He's finally out of all of our lives. But boy, oh boy, is he going to be a highly touted prospect? What, like nine points a game, two rebounds, and three torn ACLs? I think that's. Oof. That that's a guy you want on your NBA team. Sign me up. Uh, yeah, good for I'm just glad he's gone. You are our number five fraud, Mr. Trevor. Could have been a cool rivalry if he and Arkansas didn't wind up, and Missouri uh, didn't wind up stinking this year. It is what it is. Zero players from last year's Kentucky team or uh, Arkansas team, including their incoming like freshman recruits, will be on Kentucky or will be on Arkansas next year. So. There you go. Number five. Number okay. four on the fraud rankings. You could have picked Liv as a whole, but you know what? Bryson DeChambeau, look at his hat. Look at his protractors. Look at his muscles. He blew it today. Only a two under at the Masters. It. it was his best finish at the Masters, so let's give him that. But you know what? Oh. He didn't win. He didn't win. It's Scotty's world, and we're all living in it. He ripped up a signpost for what? Nothing. Bryson DeChambeau. Nothing. Fraud, fraud, Bryson. Number four. What's number three? Coming coming in at number three, we're going to throw it over to our German correspondent, Hans. Hans, what do you have to say? Oh, yes. Hello. Good to talk from Leverkusen. Uh, the fraud of the week is number three. The rest of the German Bundesliga because Bayer Leverkusen have won the title. The Leverkusen Lions, they, they roar. They are no longer Leverkusen. They are champions of the German league. Very proud of our Leverkusen and the rest of the Bundesliga. Shame on you. They are the frauds at number three. There we go by our Leverkusen. Good stuff. Thank you, Hans. Peyton, finish this off. Number two. 25 4 0. How about our Lions? Yep. Cruise. Number two on the fraud rankings. We're going back down to Arkansas. We're going to their football program, who they're having a ball because uh, Mr. Mr. Kalen, whatever his last name is, their starting quarterback this fall looked really lit it up uh, in their spring game because, you know, it's a spring game. But Arkansas football also in the news because they announced their 2024 season opener against another Lion. Stolen. 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 Golden Lions of UAPB. Um, they're going to play them at on August 29th, a Thursday at 6.30 p.m., right at the same time as Mizzou. They got kicked to ESPNU. Mizzou's on SEC Network. This is little brother stuff. It's Mizzou's time slot. And number one. Stolen. Prod, prods. One on the front rankings, Nolan. Is Arkansas again? Because Jaden Quintant. Oh. Everybody, uh, of course, the former future Missouri Tiger. Um, who com- eventually Good committed note. to Cal at Kentucky. He decommitted after Cal left Kentucky, went to Arkansas. Everyone assumed it was a done deal. He was just going to follow him there. Missouri's not really involved in this recruitment, so don't get up in arms. Um, but he's going to take a visit to Louisville. The Cardinals. The Cardinals. That could have been a dirty bird. Huh? So, yeah, we got three Arkansas fraud huh? alerts. He could still very easily wind up at uh, Arkansas, but there you go. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we, we wanted to make it very Arkansas field. Good job. We also went well over the music, I realized, but everyone, you know, just, just yeah. stick with the it. music is more we of a, we went over the day. So, yeah, 
Yeah, exactly. It's not a Peyton. I have this. I want to end it with, uh, I have some stats for you. Um, it's right. about Bayer Leverkusen because we mentioned they won the title. So this is a, this is a, like a thing. I, I feel like you just can't overstate like how big this is. So I know like we kind of made them our, our fandom team, you know, partially is a bit, whatever. Um, Peyton, the way I'd compare this for you is not a super big soccer person, right? This would be like if Cincinnati, like the year Cincinnati went to the college football playoff, this would be like if they went to the college football playoff and actually like won it, went undefeated and like beat Alabama and beat like Clemson to win the the whole thing. That's how big this is. Um, Bayer Leverkusen, here's some stats. Uh, when their coach, Chabi Alonso, took over in October of 2022, the team was second from last place. They were second to last place. It was the second worst start of, they were almost really, yeah. It was the second worst start of a season ever since 1979. Uh, Chabi Alonso, their coach, had never managed a senior team, having joined Leverkusen a year and a half ago from a B side in Spain. 18 months, exactly 557 days later, Bayer Leverkusen won their first Bundesliga title in 120 years of existence. It happened with zero defeats and 43 consecutive games unbeaten in all competitions. Uh, They're also in the their like cup final and they could win the league in Europe that they're participating in. And that was in this coach's first full season. So this would be like if you stuck like Mike McDonald on the worst NFL team and he won the Super Bowl and un- went undefeated. That's like how this compares. So, so what happens next for our Lions? Do we get Okay, promoted? so yeah. What? Do we get promoted? Get rated? <laughs> no, so they're in the top, they're in the top division. They don't get promoted anymore, but they will participate in uh in the Champions League, which is like okay. the biggest competition in Europe. Uh they'll be assuming they don't lose too many players in the transfer window in the summer, they will be largely expected to do this again uh cuz their manager is staying. So Copy. Will it happen again? I wouldn't guarantee it, but it, it it's pretty funny that we just picked this as our show's team and they have now done like I was texting Kenny about this earlier. This should have a documentary made about it. This is like one of the most remarkable feats in like history for soccer. So it's all because there you go. Kenny got a jersey in a in a care in like a mystery box care package type deal. Yep. Exactly. So there you go. Bundesliga champions by Leverkusen. Shout out. And uh you got a joke to end the show? I sure do. This one comes from a favorite TV series, The Today Show. How do you get a squirrel's attention, Milton? Uh, uh, give it an acorn. You act like a nut. Uh, I figured it was something with, with yeah, nice. <laughs> Banger. Well, there we go. Banger. There we go. All right. Hope everyone enjoyed the show uh here kenny will be back uh for friday show like we said we'll have a guest so that'll be a good uh that'll be a good show for you guys friday talking some softball and gymnastics because both are very good at mizzou so uh there you go until then everyone have a fun and safe week we'll see you guys on friday (laughs) 